that I usually talk to when they know I'm talking. So, anyway, um, 2015, sat down in the garage one evening, just something to do. I had a uh, old German Mauser rifle, and I had taken apart my laptop, and I had other stuff just in the garage. So, for just something to do, I stuck everything on this German Mauser and hung it in the garage and it stayed in there for about a year um, found a acoustic guitar on the side of the road that had a hole in the side of it well brought that home paula was going to paper mache it paper mache wouldn't stick to it and i said well let me do something with that um, i had a, several computer parts at that time so i painted it white and attached all these computer parts to it and that was my first computerized guitar i made about five more of those and then i had uh, i get my guitars at thrift stores goodwill you know they're beyond help musically uh, i got one that was very beautiful beautiful wood and i thought i'm not gonna paint this one and I was an antiques collector. I loved old machines and things, and I had those in the attic. And brought those down, took them apart, got all the parts out of them, and made my first steampunk guitar. A friend of mine did uh, antique auto auctions. And uh, I was in Austin at that time, and he invited me to come bring my stuff, set up some tables and see if we'd sell some. So I had these computerized acoustic guitars there, and then I had the one steampunk guitar. And I noticed as people walked by, they'd look at the computer guitars, and they'd go, wow. And then they'd look at the steampunk, and they went, wow. So I knew which direction I needed to go. So I'm heavy into the steampunk instruments now. Uh, I do guitars, uh, I've done dulcimers, violins, uh, anything that I can attach uh, these kind of parts to. And these are all attached with screws. There's no glue. Uh, some of them have fallen over. They don't fall apart. Um, I go to thrift stores to get uh, old machines. I don't go to antique stores because they want too much money. And the first thing I'm gonna do is tear them up. And most of the fun is seeing a piece, taking it home, and not knowing what's inside. And sometimes I wasted $20, and sometimes I found gold. Uh, these take around 60 hours to, to put together. I've got bins and bins full of parts. I've taken, I don't know how many machines apart. And most of the time is spent getting apart and looking and no, that one won't go and get and back and forth until you find something that, okay, that's gonna work. The uh, guitars, I usually start with a larger piece usually somewhere in the middle, and then it just kind of morphs out of there. I never have a predetermined idea of what I want. They kind of create themselves as I work and get parts, and they just kind of grow. Uh, many of them light up. I run lights through the, uh, this is a clarinet. Uh, I've used flutes, several flutes. Um, And where am I going to go with that? Um, this making a steam pump is so popular. It's popular all over. Um, you know, some people. Yeah, uh, steampunk is kind of having a revival. We have steampunk <laughs> gatherings. Good grief, Galveston has a whole thing. 
uh, Christmas, big steampunk thing down there. It's just a fun thing, you know, and uh, I don't know if you could really call this steampunk because it's not going along what they are doing. But when you put a bunch of gears and stuff yeah, together, stock. yeah, stock. yeah, uh, most of the uh, gears that I get, I would go to the thrift stores, try to find the old clocks, which are few and far between. Uh, so I thought, well, let's check eBay. You know, so you can go to eBay and you'll see they'll have five cuckoo clocks, you know, in a group and you can get them for probably what I would have paid for one of the cuckoo clocks in a thrift store. And uh, they would come in and I would notice that the wrappings that newspapers was uh, foreign. And they would have personal notes in the box thanking me for purchasing from them. Found out they were coming from the Ukraine. Um, but you don't see that anymore. Um, it's, yeah. Um, people love to look at them. Uh, sales are not that great. You know, every once in a while you'll find, yeah, it's a very niche market. Uh, it's not for everybody, but uh, some one piece will hit someone just right. Had a lady buy one of my uh, acoustic guitars uh, because her partner played the guitar. Mm. So I shipped that to her. Um, I have uh, several electric guitars, and those are real fun. Uh, and they're all computer parts as well. I've got those all on a wall in my living room when you put all five, five of them together. Yeah, it's a nice presentation. Um, the uh, lot of the wood that I found, I have some friends out in Blanco that have a, a ranch out there. So I go out and get the old uh, uh, cedar roots and I've used those for many of my uh, bases. Try to make them as natural as I can. Um, when I buy the uh, sewing machines, I love to get sewing machines because they've got some really neat parts on them. But many of them would come with the old wooden sewing machine cases. You know, not the table, but the cases. So I had these cases there in the attic. I thought, well, I need to do something with those. So those have become, I call them my light boxes. Uh, I order the old Edison style bulbs, and some of them are the big bulbs that are supposed to hang, but mine are sitting up on top. And they've got all the steampunk stuff on those as well. And they've got a rheostat, and they light up. And uh, I've actually sold one of those. Okay. Um, and they're yeah, 30 pounds or more. Uh, and trying to ship those is a fun thing. Uh, How much is something like that cost? Those are 1800 1800 Loose. <laughs> well, I, people tell me you need to charge more, but I'm like, eh. I've got some for three. Yeah, I've got some for three fifty, and the, uh, one of mine, uh, I got a whole set of uh, piano keys. So I built a frame for those, and they're sits like a keyboard. And then I've got a clarinet, a trumpet, and a flute that are on that with gears all in the keys. I took uh, Photoshop and I printed out musical notes mm -hmm. and blew those up, put them on um, sticky paper, and put those on the keys. And then eight or nine layers of uh, varnish. And then you go in and you cut out each key. So you've got the musical notes on the keys. And then you can, that one is 3,000. Uh, and, you know, it's this big. We is had it down here. We yeah, we had it down here. There a couple of uh, exhibits. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's like a it's there. Yeah. Definitely yeah. In the lobby. Uh -huh. That was one where I was at a thrift store and bought it for the 
the cuckoo the mechanism and i thought you know that case that gotta do something with that yeah so uh that's not the original uh, mechanism that's in it it's a new one and then i put all the gears down below when it lights up on the sides and i call it my, my cuckoo clock threw up um so it's there's there's a lot of time spent just looking and trying to find you know what goes here this actually uh i can't remember what little town we were going through but they had a big um junk store antique store and they had a bunch of the gun stocks just the wooden stocks in a barrel and they had a bunch of the gun barrels in another barrel and i actually found a barrel that would sit on top of this so that's not even the the whole gun um but you put them together and uh you just have a lot of fun with them they kind of they kind of talk to me the uh acoustic guitars that i have you have the sound hole and with some of the parts that I put around, all of a sudden it takes on a character of its own. Um, I've got one that has funny little things that look like eyes, and I call it Looney Tunes. Okay. Uh, Do you find that certain guitar manufacturers uh, that wood that's good for certain things, like a Les Paul versus a Marshall or something? No, it, you know, it's all. No, I've, I've never even thought about that. Yeah, the. Uh, Acoustic guitars, uh, you have to be careful because it's very thin wood. Uh, but I use all screws, and uh, I keep every screw when I take something, an old machine apart, I keep all the screws and nuts and bolts, and I use those to attach things so everything is old on it. I don't want to use brand new screws, you know, that won't fit in with what I'm trying to do here. So essentially everything is recycled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. What's, um, the, uh, what's the best way for anybody to get a, a hold of you regarding your, your work? Uh, I've got a website that has everything that I've ever produced. I've got what's about... That, uh, what's that? The name of it? It's markeisenberg.com, and I have a few business cards. Um, and I'm at two, two galleries here. I'm at a gallery up in uh, Denison right now. Uh, what uh, San Antonio Art League. That one is kind of hard to get your stuff in. You can only get one piece in there at a time. Uh, I'm down at the River Art Group, which is in La Vieta. And there you are you have to be juried in. Um, you can only have so many people in a different, you know, so many photographers, so many sculptors, you know. Uh, so I'm in there, and there you are allowed, there's a, a space that you can have. And I have six or eight things in there year round. Every three months we have to change out new stuff. But you're there all year long. And you're at La Vieta. So what do you uh what do you classify your form of art as? Well, yeah, sculpture is what everybody puts me in because there's another what, what do you call it? I call it sculpture. sculpture? Uh-huh. Yeah. Um because it's not all steampunk. Some of us, you know, the computerized stuff. Um, so, yeah, I just, I, I like being classified as a sculptor rather than some people want to say it's mixed media. And I'm like, no, no, it's sculpture. Mixed media to me is pen and ink and watercolor, you know, this to me. In fact, I, I just pulled out of the show because they put me in mixed media. And uh, I, I didn't like, well, they didn't tell me they were going to do that either, so. I pull my stuff out. I, I'm an old hippie that uh, things don't sit well with me every once in a while. <laughs> but uh, down there, uh, you have to work one day a month in both places. Well, just down there at the river group. But it's real enjoyable because you get all the traffic walking up out of the river. And you meet people from all over the world. Um, it's really interesting. It's good, but you need a lot of strange people up there. Mm -hmm. a lot of strange people. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Unique. Elite. 
You make the Make the issue work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. You do, yeah. <laughs> But that's kind of, I've got, uh, I think I said, 78 pieces that I've produced okay. over the years. Um, I've gotten into some costume jewelry using the gears, and I get to go get the little plastic beads and stuff from Michael's, you know, to put on there. Um, you know, do little stuff like that. I've done a couple of steampunk hats. Okay. Um, uh, by partner's son had a pair of skis. He says, here, can you do something with these? So I put all the computers, circuit boards and stuff on those, and he's got those in his house. So I'll work on anything, any kind of canvas I can get a hold of. So, and I'm having, it's, I'm basically retired. I was in advertising, but I'm retired now. But now I'm getting, between these two organizations, uh, it's taken up all my time. In fact, I've had to drop off doing some work because I'm on both boards and, you know, doing all of that. So it's like, you know, I need a rest. Uh, what, uh -huh. what, what, what made you interested with this? You know, I've wondered about that. And looking back to my very young childhood, I was always putting stuff together, arranging things. So it's not even knowing I was doing it, I've been doing this basically all my life. I'd go to my grandmother's house in the summer and she had uh, the old uh, wagon front wooden seat with the wheels and she had cow heads, buffalo heads and all kinds of stuff. She'd always say, Mark, go out there and do something with that. So every time I'd go out there and re see, you know, I've been doing this, not knowing it, all my life. She was grooming. Yes. I, uh, I've always been an artist, but I never was good enough to really take off in watercolor or pen and ink or anything. Um, but this, I just, I enjoy this so much. And I hope you do too. <laughs> Okay, thank you.